so person prays with salah, he doesn't fulfill my rights. That person is very pious and he does this, that and the other and he lies to other people and he cheats and he does this and that and the other. The reality is that the person is not fulfilling the second component of his sharia, which is hukuk al-ibad. The reality is that we must question again whether that person even deserves to be called pious or not. Because his sharia is not complete. Okay? This is the understanding of this. And if we have this basic principle in our mind, we will understand the reality to our deen. And the asal mizaj and the ruh and the spirit of deen will come into our lives. Many times what happens is that we are very good in one, but we totally neglect the other. So there may be some people who are very good with their families, they're very good with their relatives, they're very good with friends, they're very good with their, their neighbors, but on the other hand, quota zero, sifr in their ibadah. Hukuk Allah, zero. Hukuk al 100 out of 100. And then there's one group that's 100 out of 100 in serving Allah, but zero in, in fulfilling the rights of the service. Do you, see, do you see the two groups that we have here? So usually people fall into one of the two groups. But the person who can actually bring both of these together and fulfill the rights of both, this person is complete. So he has the rights of Allah that he's fulfilling appropriately and correctly to the best of his ability. And at the same time, this person is fulfilling the rights of, Allah, of, of the servants. Now, when we say the rights of the servants, the highest of all the rights in the servants belongs to, who, who does it belong to? The mother and then the father, the parents. After the parents is the children, and then the wife, and then the husband, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunties, paternal, maternal, you know, then it keeps expanding. And then from there, and the rights that belong to the relatives after the family, after the relatives are finished, after all the relatives are finished, then the rights come to? Who is after the, the relatives? The neighbors. Okay? So taking care of your neighbors, catering to their needs, and then after the neighbors, the Muslim in general, and then after the Muslim in general, humanity in general, and not only are there rights to human beings, but the entire creation. The entire creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set rights for the entire creation on us. So the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, to, for the Muslims to contribute to every aspect of life, there are rights to everything. But to every single human being, you and I have a right. So it's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you have what we call an immediate family, and then you have an extended family. Your immediate family are those that apparently you know of their blood relationship, and the extended family are the children of Adam alayhi salam. And the children of Adam alayhi salam, they include everyone. So you have rights to every single person because the reality is that every single person in this world is somehow or the other related to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, Al-Nasim in Adam wa Adam in Quran. That all of the human beings are from, who are they from? Adam alayhi salatu salam. Well, Adam in Turab, and Adam alayhi salam was created from? Turab. What's Turab? Soil. Adam alayhi salam, so the whole theory of evolution goes out the window from this one hadith. That Entire mankind is created from Adam alayhi salam, and Adam alayhi salam was not created from a monkey, na'udhu billahi min dharik. Now Adam alayhi salam was created from soil. And nasim and Adam and Adam al-Turam. So every single person in this aspect is actually related. So now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he would perform a nikah, the first verse that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam would recite is the verse in Surah Al-Nisa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nasu taqoo rabbakum alladhi khalafakum min nafsin wahida. وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَسَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالٌ كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ Fear Allah وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you regarding your, your relatives. How did you deal with them? How did you deal with these people who were your relatives? Every person that's related to you, every person that's associated with you, they have rights on you. How did you fulfill these rights? Now the reality is that if a person fulfills rights, that actually brings peace. It brings sukun. It brings tranquility in your life. So if you consistently fulfill the rights of your parents, your parents won't have anything to shout at you for. Okay? If you're consistently fulfilling the rights of your teacher, your teacher can't scold you either. If you are fulfilling the rights of your wife, she has to be cuckoo to shout at you. If you're fulfilling the rights of your brothers, your sisters, your family members, the masjid, the people of the masjid, the people of your society, your, your community, your neighbors, then how are these people actually going to come and shout at you? You're fulfilling their rights, they can't say anything to you. Live your life in sukoon, tranquility, peace, as you wish. But 
when you begin to violate the right of another person, then what happens is that person comes and demands. Okay? He demands his right. That give me my right, give me my right, give me my right, give me my right, fulfill my haq for me, fulfill my haq for me. Now either you humble yourself and you fulfill that right, or refuse or you refuse to fulfill the right. If you humble yourself and fulfill the right, alhamdulillah, it's over, the story's over. But if you stick your chest out and all proud of yourself, I'm not going to fulfill the right, then what happens is anger. Now once this anger comes in, now the opposition, the other party whose right you violate it, they have the choice to either forgive you or persist for the right. If they forgive you, it's over. They're rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if they persist and keep pushing for that right, then what happens is what we call a damaka, an explosion in families. Then brother and brother won't talk to each other for many years. Then sister-in-laws won't talk to each other for many years. Then relatives, father and son won't talk to each other for a very long time and sometimes probably even for the rest of their lives. So do you understand the simple cycle or the basics to argument? Or what may end up happening is now the Billah, may Allah save our youth, the marriage will end up breaking. One is violating the right, the other refuses to fulfill. Illusion, this one doesn't want to forgive, this one's refusing to lower himself down, and boom, there goes the end of that relationship altogether. So the basic ingredient to success is fulfilling the rights of another person. If you and I can fulfill the rights of every single person in our community, the reality is that there will be no problem or no issue at all within our lives. Our lives will be very peaceful, very, very peaceful. Like when I used to study in school in Madrasa, there were some students who I probably didn't even know their name. I probably didn't even know they existed. Why didn't I know they existed? Because they came to class, they did what they had to do, they went back to their, they went back to their rooms, they studied, they came to class, went back and studied. They never did anything wrong, so no one ever knew of them. They just did their thing in and out. And then there were those students who always had something to do. They always had some badmashi, or they had to do something wrong. They always had to mess up something. And they would do crazy things. And whenever they would, do, whenever they would get caught doing these crazy things, you know, he did this, he did that, he broke this person's window, he dropped a whole pot of, you know, two cups of extra salt inside the salad, and he did this, and he did that, and then you're there, and you're in trouble. So when you get in trouble, then everyone knows, you know, this guy's al-badmash, he's the biggest badmash there is, right? So, if a person fulfills the rights, his life goes very smooth, and not only in this world, if he fulfills the rights of Allah, then in the hereafter too. He fulfill, if he fulfills the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he comes in front of Allah, did you pray your salah? Yes. Did you give your zakat? Yes. Did you fast? Yes. Did you give hajj? Yes. This, this, that, the other. Yes. The person did everything. Now, drop him off to paradise. He's good to go. Now Allah is asking, did you pray your salah? I should have prayed your salah when I was 23 years old, but before that there were another 10 years of salah that I missed. Okay. Till the next day, we'll see with this guy. Okay, how about your zakat? You know, I gave probably the last five years of my life before I died. Okay, there's another 50 years that we have to account for. How about your fasting? Oh, I fasted three days every, 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 every Ramadan. Okay, we have to deal with the other 27. How about your Hajj? Oh, I was honeymooning here and there and traveling here and there. And, you know, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to go for my Hajj. Okay, let's deal with that. So now this person is being held up because he violated the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, in order to fulfill the rights of, a, of any person, any person, if you want to make the fulfillment of rights easy on yourself, remember one, one principle. If you have this principle in mind, the fulfillment of any person's rights will become easy on you. Fulfilling rights will not be a burden on you anymore, and it will be very easy, and you will be able to consistently keep fulfilling the rights of the people around you. It will never be a burden on your shoulders. Always remember that I am pleasing my father, my mother, my teacher, my friends, my brother, my sister, my uncle, my auntie, and all these people, I am fulfilling their rights, not to make them happy, but to make Allah happy. To make who happy? Allah. Because if you're there to please Allah, then you're rewarded by Allah. But if you're fulfilling that, if you're trying to please that person, then what happens? If I'm trying to please someone, if I'm trying to please, for example, Shah's by here, now what happens is if I do something for him and he doesn't say thank you to me, what happens now? Dil me ak. What happens? A fire. Oh, I did this thing for him and he didn't say thank you to me. Now how dare him? Or if I came to the masjid thinking that I come to MEC for the sake of the people, then what happens is that, oh, I come to these people for so many weeks and no one said thank you to me. No one said, oh, Mufti Sahib gives a very beautiful speech. Dil fire in the heart. Now, the same thing repeats it.